can't hear the music, but I can. Mm-hmm. I can find you. Welcome, everybody, to Let the Bass Drop. We are live, coming from Pompano Beach, Florida. Myself, Jeremy Torsk, and my lovely, lovely assistant and wife, Christy Torsk. Hi, everybody. On a very special episode of whatever we're calling this thing, Us Live, (laughs) (laughs) Valentine's Day. Yeah. So happy Valentine's Day to you. Thank you. And uh, she did a a classic mistake, the faux pas, the bad, poor etiquette, which is waking me up with a gift this morning, which is, (laughs) we typically don't buy gifts. Oh, that's not true. Um, That I have made a typical uh, mistake. (laughs) <laughs> and that miss that <laughs> it's not a big deal just once in a while we buy each other once valentine's day yeah. gifts and other times we don't so <laughs> so actually it's better Sorry. if you give it to me right in the morning because now i got the rest of the day to sneak out and go get something so yeah i have it all along <laughs> I I, i've had these anything. roses in my trunk for the past two weeks <laughs> <laughs> i don't want those <laughs> I, no offense. i've had this diamond brooch or whatever I don't know. <laughs> so jewelry uh, i'll take yes <laughs> So uh, a couple of, of things, you know, we, you see a different background today. It would probably sound a little different. This would be better if I talked a little bit more into this thing, which is why I hate lobs. Let me, let me button this. It's not supposed to have a button, but it pulls it more in front of me. So we are in a different set because last night was the very first night of our latest Speaking Done Better, which is a speaking mastermind. We had nine, ten people in this room here. So we're at the board room table here. We had four people online, so we've had, I think, 14 total in all. Yeah. Uh, we had Scott Lesnick yeah. was our sage advisor. I think it went really well. It was yeah, well received. Great too. first night, first of yeah. seven weeks of high intense speaking performance presentation training. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, I wanted to give a shout out to anyone who's watching who might have been in that with us last night. Um, and, and I'm not a speaker, but nope. I still got value out of it because I still have to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be presenting to groups yes, and, and, and I present. realtors, mm-hmm. uh, clients, um, associations, uh, mm-hmm. investors. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we, finding out your why, the, you know, everything that we do in becoming a professional speaker, getting people yeah. to pay us to speak, can be put into any walk of mm-hmm. professional life. Mm-hmm. And yeah. since last night was the first night, I know you just added another person potentially. So anybody that wants to join us can still join. Right? They can. Yeah, we, they can still join. It's a thousand dollars, but it's ten thousand dollars worth of value. I, mm-hmm. I promise, ten thousand dollars worth of value. And last night was recorded, so you can watch it. And last night was where do we start? So yeah, a lot of deep work starts this coming week, and so and and WNBA players, doctors. Um, retirees, uh, healers, you know, uh, professional speakers, yeah. aspiring speakers that runs the gamut, mm-hmm. more girls than boys, uh, I think, if I'm allowed to say that these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a really good group. And also what I liked about it was it's, um, it's a safe place to improve your skills where you're not going to get judged. Yes. You know, people are very helpful and give great advice yeah that, we had good good uh, sage advisor last night was against mm-hmm. scott lesnick tonight uh next oh, sorry next two next week tuesday night annie meehan is coming over from yeah. the west coast she'll be here the pineapple lady yeah. look her up on and TED every Talks. week you have really great presenters or guest speakers yes or, you know people that have the world-class speakers successfully for many many <laughs> years and know the ins and outs of it so um even if you're just going to work on your what is it like your delivery yeah your tone your yeah. dialect your message it's it's great it's, uh i'm looking forward to it thank you and i'm yes yeah, so i'm it. thanks for yeah. uh for for posting that um i'm not just saying that because it's you <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you would <laughs> no i wouldn't <laughs> so today we're talking on this special valentine's day uh, about first impressions is yeah. the title of this thing first impressions you don't get a, a second chance to make no. one of those and why did I do first impressions on Valentine's Day? Well, because we do this every day and sometimes I just wait too long and need something easy. Mm-hmm. And it's an easy jump to get to, if you wanna to get to a special Valentine's Day, which for us is, man, our, I don't know, 12th or something like that, um, you better make a good first impression. And when I met you, I was in a very bad, 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 low, low place in my life. 
but I don't think it came through necessarily the day I met you uh, because w my attitude d didn't really reflect my, my, my reality in, in my, my professional life where it was in my family life at the time because mm -hmm. what good is that going to do? The energy you give out right. to the world is not going to do you any good if it's negative, even if you're in a negative situation. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I just, rem just kind of look at where we are now and think, I don't know what you saw that day because I remember that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a decent day. It was a, I just got promoted. I was in a special part yeah. of the building. Uh, she's, they brought her in to cut the executive's hair, <laughs> and I was <laughs> part of the executive team for that. It was my first day over there. But it, I was still making like $60,000 a year, 45000 yeah. a year. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I lost a company. I was in the hole like $400,000, and um, it was not a, a highlight for sure. Uh, of where I had been previously, but it dwarfed where I was previously, dwarfs where we are today because of this energy that we just had that day and just continued to build on. Yeah, yeah. I knew that, you know, wherever wherever you were at that point was not going to last. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. And I did not mm -hmm. know that. No? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just didn't know. I was such a, I was in a very dark place. I didn't see anything except for what was right in front of me. But that's what I chose to, to do instead of saying, well, if I can't see what's in front of me, there's still no sense looking what's behind me. I'm past that. Mm -hmm. And I'm here right now. And let's serve the people in front of me here. Yeah. So yeah. that's. Um, so I think, you know, too, if you're in a dark place, everybody has ups and downs in life. It's just. It's going to get better eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Storms don't yeah. last forever. No, they don't. Um, and you can't appreciate the good times yeah. without those bad Especially good times. if you have a good attitude about yeah. it. Yeah. So that was uh, interesting. Anyway, the, the mm. first impression, I remember that day. I remember walking in to that uh, room. Right. Well, <laughs> I must have made a good first impression. <laughs> well, you're the hot barber. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. You're still as hot today as you were uh, back then. Thank you. All right, you don't have to buy me anything. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So first impressions, uh, what I'm going to be talking a little bit about, how does, how does that do with business? You know, this is mostly a business show, even mm -hmm. though we talk about uh, some personal things on this show. It, mostly it's a business show. So how does first impressions work for us when it comes to getting business or making sales, especially since I'm going to be using some of Ray Leone's first impressions and resonating statements stuff right here. Let's go ahead and give uh, more specifics to how to make a sale, mm -hmm. all right? So when people, especially in B2B, not so much B2, B2C, which, which is business to customer, but, but, but it, it yeah, could apply matters, there. Yeah, that matters, though. But most, but not, but B2B, this matters yes. more. Because yeah. B2C, you're expected to do small talk. In other okay. words, the first time you meet a customer, you're expected to do a little small talk. It's kind of more accepted yes. when you meet a, a real estate client. The first thing you do is you do some small right, talk. Right. Now you have to try to have a build a relationship or find yes. Some, something. Now what we're going to talk about today will change that. Okay. But it is more accepted. What is not accepted is doing it in a business to business situation because time is everything, mm -hmm. and chances are if you're dealing with somebody in a real estate position or if you're selling. Shoes, one of our nephews, uh, Mike, little Mike Emerson, is doing a great job selling shoes. You're dealing with all four types of characters of, of, of disc. Mm -hmm. You never know who, everyone needs shoes. D's need shoes, I need shoes, C's need shoes, S's need shoes. Yeah. Who's buying these shoes? Moms, right? Moms are a lot of I's and S's. They love small talk. Mm -hmm. But when you're in business, you're dealing with decision makers, those are high D's, and D's hate small talk. Yeah. So when you're a business to business person, if you're doing small talk, it, there's a 75% chance that you're turning off your client immediately. Okay. 75%. 65% of, of all D's, high D's, uh, decision makers hate questions right off the bat. How are you doing? I'm Jeremy Torres. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Wrong. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Ray knows it. <laughs> That's why he's a millionaire. <laughs> 61% of people hate benefit claim openers. What does that mean? Hi, my name is Jeremy Torres. Let me tell you the benefits of, of going oh, with this product. 51% okay. okay. <laughs> of all decision makers hate quality claims. Let me tell you why we should go with us, because here's how good the product is, the quality. So you're, you're talking about it 
in terms of first first, first impression. impression, first meeting, where rocking right into that okay. office the okay. first time. Thirty-eight percent hate statements of intention. So hey, my name is Jeremy, and what I'm here to do today is to tell you this: okay. they don't like it because they feel like they're being sold. Well, yes, or, okay, because they are. Yeah, but they also they just it doesn't. Everybody does that. It, you're not going to get through. You're not going to differentiate yourself. So how do you do that? How do you not make small talk and not make any of uh -huh. those claims with a high D? <laughs> That's called the resonating statement. Okay. The resonating statement makes a comment or statement that summarizes either deep desires or their worst fears. So you're going to cut through. Right? You make a comment or statement that summarizes their worst fear or their greatest desire. It strikes a chord and hits an emotion. It lets the customer know that you understand their situation. It has the customer thinking, wow, this person really understands what without, I'm challenged without with. Without having to make claims or Yeah, or you're not making it, exactly. You're getting right to the fear. <laughs> right, the fear or, or the benefit, or uh, not the benefit, but the reward. Like well, the, the right, yeah. um, okay. it's a, the, the, a desire. So, uh, I'm gonna okay. try to think of some examples. Okay, um, so if you're dealing with somebody who is fear uh, motivated, mm -hmm. um, let, let's let's do it this way. I've gone through layoffs before. Mm -hmm. I've been. I had to lay. <laughs> this is a horrible story. Somebody, I worked really, 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 really hard in the, as a contractor. And then this kid, uh, Keith, this person, this guy, Keith, liked me a lot. And he mm -hmm. told his boss about me. And Wayne took me, my name is Wayne, took me to lunch. Ingram, Wayne Ingram, took me to lunch. It was well, not Comcast. Back then it was American Cable or something like that. Takes me to lunch. Um, we, he talks, he wants to hire me to come in, into Comcast to be a lineman which is like jumping 18 steps. Okay. Because they were having an in-house splicing team. And m as a contractor, my work was very good. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to hire me to come in-house. So I said, yes, of course I come in-house. I went in-house. And within eight months, I actually got a promotion and I was Wayne's equal. Mm. Over in a different, in a horrible part of the world. Sorry, but I was in Hialeah mm -hmm. as a young, 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 brand new manager leader and, and put in a place called Hialeah where no one spoke English. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I didn't speak, speak much Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> uh, much Spanish. Uh, but but I, I learned. And then eight months after that, I was promoted to manager. And so then I was, a, I, I, Wayne didn't work for me. I think he kind of did for a little bit, but I was above him. And then he did work for me. And then after about three years, I had to lay Wayne off with these yeah. massive layoffs, massive. And we all had company trucks, so I had to drive him home because he had a company truck. And I'm like, oh, I think you told me about this. Horrible, before. horrible. Yeah. So let's That's say, awkward. getting to the resident statement, let's say I'm a, a headhunter where I, I find people mm -hmm. jobs. So I go into a, an office where they know they just went through these massive layoffs. Right. And I might, maybe I have a key position where I know that they can probably fill five people's position with this one person. So if I go in there and say, hey buddy, I see a golf picture behind you. Are you a golfer? I'm a golfer too. What is your handicap? Big, I hate that. That's mm -hmm. small talk, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, so mm -hmm. I just want to interrupt you for a second. How do you know that that person is a high D? Is it because, or most they're, likely they're because of their position? position? Okay. And okay. you can walk in and look at how they're dressed. You can look and see if you can see their desk. So their <laughs> first impression. Your first impression of them will tell right. you if they're a DIS or a C. Okay. How they're, if I'm sitting at my desk and I have my top button like this and everything is at a right angle and I look up from my spreadsheets, I'm a high, high C. Okay. And so that's not, that's a different type of person. You're not gonna, that, that's not a decision maker usually, that's a data. Mm -hmm. You know, operator. So you want to get out of that office, find out who's making the decisions, first of all. Uh, a, a, a high eye, when you walk in, you're not going to see his desk. <laughs> it's just going to be a mess. This won't be buttoned. This will be open. He won't have a tie on. Maybe he will, but it's going to be loose in a little bit. He's going to give you a hug, even on his worst day. Okay. You know that's a high eye because mm -hmm. they're really interpersonal and friendly. Mm -hmm. 
A D is going to be sitting there, and he's just you're going to see his desk, and probably somebody sitting out of the desk bringing him coffee, and you know, and he's not afraid to to assert that power. Mm-hmm. And you're going to know right away that he demands respect. D's must respect you, or she right. must respect <laughs> you. Eyes must like you. <clears throat> C's must nothing you. <laughs> this doll <dull> business. <laughs> S's must like you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, must trust you that oh, you're not okay. going to fire their whole. You know, the thing you're doing is going to end up hurting my staff and my family. People that count, they must yeah. trust you. Eyes have to like you, and, and high Ds must respect you. So when you walk in and you start this bull crap with, right, you know, questions right off the bat about, mm-hmm. but you want to resonate. So in that situation, one of the worst days of my professional career, I just drove my, my the guy who brought me to the company, I just drove him home. And I had an appointment with this HR person. Because now I let everyone go, but now this company wants me to bring in some like a new position, right? Okay. So I have to meet. They're telling me to meet this person, mm-hmm. and maybe it's the third person I'm meeting today, because this company lined up people to interview. I, yeah. Okay. So everyone else before I'm coming in doing the same thing, the small talk and all that stupid stuff, but now this person comes in, and the first thing they say, they sit down, and they go, "Hey, Jeremy." I'm sorry that we had to meet today. Uh, I know today's a tough day. I, I think the wires are crossed. I think it's supposed to be done. It's, it's my understanding a couple of days ago, and so soon it's got to be raw. But I mm-hmm. tell you, I know where you've been. I myself had to <laughs> drive the person home who got me into the company after I kind of went up a few notches. And I ended up having to drive him home after he got laid off. So I've mm-hmm. been where you've been. How, uh, the, the relationships you've built. But mm-hmm. the people in this company just don't stop at that front door. You've probably been to barbecues and families. I know it's a tough day, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you I get what you're going through. Okay. I understand. I That's understand a you're resonating yes. statement. Yeah. You're trying to um, have something relatable to that. Very them relatable. That's not ingen- ingenuous. Ingenuous. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. It gives you authority. Yeah. And it relates you- to the business. Yes. So it's not considered exactly. like fluff or small talk or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now then, after that, there's a there's a positioning statement after that. So resonating statement is first, then okay. the positioning statement. Okay. Then it's, um, then it's, here's why our, you want to do business with my company. Now you're getting to the the benefit claims, okay. or the quality claims, <clears throat> or the statement of intent. That's secondary. Okay. But it's always but the followed first up initial with initial impression resonating statement. Okay. With D's. With D no, that's with everyone, but it's going to change whether it's D, I, S or C of the resonating statement. Okay. Because the I, you're going to make it again more, more personal. friendly, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, I you know, I noticed that now that the picture you could play where you see a, the picture of them singing on stage in the in a past life. Mm-hmm. You go, Did you, were you a singer? Mm-hmm. I played in Nashville. I played drums in Nashville. I opened up next to Reba McIntyre. That's the closest I got to, but I opened for, I played for Billy Reasons. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. yeah you know, now we're talking about his passion. Mm-hmm. And now we, I resonated because I have ex- personal experience with that being on the stage. Yeah. I can't say, yeah. were you a singer? I love, go- my wife and I go see rock bands all the time at dive bars. Do you? That's different. Mm-hmm. You're not resonating. Yeah. It's different. How do you yeah. do that? That's just bullshit. You're blowing smoke up. I could never get on stage and sing. That's not connecting. All right? Mm-hmm. You know what I you know what I say? I looked at your ass for the last 30 years. Say, what? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's an eye. They get the joke. Right. I'm a drummer. I looked at the singer's ass for 30 years. Right. So whenever I played, right. they would get something like that. Now, okay. that's going to make an impact. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, an S... You know, if you see a picture of them, of their family, you can talk to them about a family thing. Again, uh, Ray's son was literally a championship women's soccer um, coach, mm-hmm. like at the, the highest level, level of college, right. national championships. If he walks into an S's, which is the gatekeeper, usually, not the decision maker, but the gatekeeper okay. to the decision maker. Okay. And in the resonating statement, instead of walking in and saying, hi, I wanna, I'm here because I just want to tell you that all the great things our company can do for your company. She hears that from everyone. But if he sees a picture of a soccer player in the photo, you can say, you know, I got to tell you, I'm just going to hear, but I just wanted to tell you, I'm going to show you something. 
My son just won a national uh, championship teaching women, coaching women's soccer. I see your daughter plays. How old is she? Mm -hmm. Has she ever heard of George Washington College? Oh, my God. That's, I know. You know, whatever it is. Right. That's a connection now because they both care about their children playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And now she's yeah. going to say, you're going to be on that schedule right. to meet them. To yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then the C is you don't even want to. You just walk in and, and the C is you scare the shit out of them. Why? Because they hate the, bene they hate the unknown they hate the penalty of non-decisions. Oh. So okay. you're not going to get into them with a reward. You're going to need to you make to, it punitive. So you if you have to don't, make it like a fear. If almost. you don't make like this decision now, fear. what is it going to cost you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I've been where you are, says, says the guy who just lost everybody, is, um, is a C but not a D. Uh, and, and I walk in, I say, I know where you are. He just had to let people go. He doesn't care because he's never been to a barbecue. If he has, he was the guy sitting on the bench alone. Mm -hmm. Right? You've seen them. Mm -hmm. um, they're called mortgage brokers. They're all loners. <laughs> <laughs> Don't insult the mortgage brokers. So, um, well, they're Some loners. Some of them are good. They're loners. I know. It's a yeah. joke. It's a joke. Anyway, um, you, you talk about the, the pain that's associated with not getting things in gear. Not bringing the people that I know could bring in this thing will get us back on track. And, for C's. And the, for the C's. The, it's this, the cost of indecision or inaction. Mm -hmm. It's punitive right. motivation. And then you put some urgency to it, right? Yes. By well, the making earth, that sort of statement mm -hmm. where they'll act. They're going to act. Because otherwise it, they're going to analyze everything and yeah. think about everything and, and do you, their homework. Yeah, you tie the monetization of yeah. the time that's cost, the time is costing to the decision and they'll, yeah. they're gonna, you're in. Okay. Um, beyond that then is the positioning statement and you always follow a positioning statement with, this is a Ray Leon original, everybody. This is, this is worth a million dollars, everyone. Mm -hmm. Which means to you. Which means to you? Yeah. The reason you wanna do business with our company is that we are national, which means to you that the yeah. person that you're using now who's local when they run out of material, what happens? You're on, on the hook. You're delayed. But we're national, which means to you that if we get a push, a rush on inventory, we have warehouses all over the United States to pull from, and we're 24 hours out from anything that we could ever use. Mm -hmm. that, that's a huge benefit to you. Now, reverse that. You're the local guy going into the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, the person who's there is a national brand. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm local, yeah. which means to you that I know your project better than anyone else because we are from here, we're about this community, mm -hmm. and we go through special um, processes. We have systems and processes in place because we're local mm -hmm. that we source these things that we use here Lo cheaper than anywhere else because we know that it's blah, blah, whatever it is. Yeah. You use your, you lean into your strength. Yeah. Okay. You know, if it's about running out of material um, and you're, you are local, then you need to come up with a way to guarantee them if that's their biggest fear. Now, we can get into another thing, which we'll talk about another time, which is probing questions. It's called defining the problem or problem definition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if they don't give a shit about material or, or inventory, then you would never do that. Right. But if you so found you out they did. You have to do your homework before you go and talk right. to somebody. Right? <laughs> that's right. But that's what yeah. I mean by the which means to you. Mm -hmm. You always finish with which. So okay. the company that's been around for 100 years, which means to you, we're not going anywhere. Right. The company that's only been so there for one year. So that would play to an S very well because then they trust you. Yep. That you're not going to but also business and you're going to, mm -hmm. you have good service, systems, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perhaps, maybe not. Right. But but you may or may not have that. But yeah, you're yeah, it's you're gonna help them that. Feel but, but what if confident. you're new? What if you're a year old? We're the new kids on the block, which yeah. means to you, right? You are our only right. uh, focus. Right. You've got all of us. Our we're yes. our systems yes. are catered to you. Or how they're different from the existing company. Mm -hmm. how that's they've what I mean. improved. But, right. Yes. Okay. And you make their you make this. That's all the problem. Now again. How do you know it's important to them how long the company's been here? You've asked. You've talked. You've asked smart questions. You've, you've 
gotten away those from. Those are the probing questions? Those are the probing questions. <laughs> right. pro so what are the probing questions? Well, that's, a, that's an answer for another day. Oh. Today right. we're keeping it yeah. at resonating statements, at yeah. first impressions, because you can never make another first impression. No, you can't. You know? And when you said that we were talking about first impressions today, I thought you meant, like, to me, that means the, your appearance, how you look. <laughs> But what it you does, say too. also matters. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, half of it is how you look. I'm in shorts. <laughs> but you've already seen and heard me, so it doesn't matter that you know now that I've got the Zoom look on, that I've got the, right. the business on top and the fun at the bottom. Right. It doesn't matter. You've, I've mm -hmm. already made my impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we're going to sit here and throw the, I'm gonna throw the sort of sport coat on, and we're going to have a show mm -hmm. because that's the impression that I want. Yeah. It doesn't matter that this is just a black t-shirt and shorts and tennies on, or runners. What do they call them in England? My runners? <laughs> oh, Which I, I don't forget run. what they're called. Um, yeah. uh, trainers. Trainers. Yeah. Because I'm doing other, I'm editing video the other eight hours yeah, I'm here today. you're not meeting anybody. Yeah, today is, today is a, a nice editing day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that first impression, when someone sees me on YouTube and they don't, they, they've never watched this before. Yeah. Oh. They they don't uh, they don't know <laughs> they don't need to know that I've got shorts on today's a, an edit video so it's that right. first impression that that does play into it mm -hmm. you know uh, walking in uh, yeah. and, and by the way first impressions happen much faster than people realize too oh it's within seconds in milliseconds yeah <laughs> now now within yeah. seconds yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly as soon as they see you as much. soon as they see you and but you can change it with when yeah, you open you your can. mouth mm -hmm. when you <laughs> you can make it worse or better you can make it worse <laughs> when or better. you open your mouth <laughs> so we've been on for 30 minutes fast 30. oh wow fast Good job. fast 30. Good. yeah so yeah. put into the comments below oops well how about that look at that one hey everybody <laughs> see this is our board table we had all the microphones set up last night yeah <clears throat> so today put into the comments what you what what you do? What it, what's your game? What's your first openers usually? Your first uh, lines? Because it's go. definitely a skill. You have to practice it. Hundred percent. Yes. Uh, this is all coming from Success Secrets of the Sales Funnel. Success Secrets of the Sales Funnel. It's a book. It's a system. Mm -hmm. Hit me up on CoachingDoneBetter.com. It's free to become a member. I can walk you through these resonating statements, these position statements, everything that we need to do to get you, you and your team selling, and it won't be me, by the way, it'll be Tony the own, the, the son of Ray, or it'll be Ray, um, that I'll hook you guys up with. But definitely uh, hit us up. If you're a coach, done better 90, gets you 90 free days on the platform. You get a profile, you get to put videos, you get to put PDFs, books, whatever, resources. And you can live stream like we're doing it here on mm -hmm. where you're seeing us, but you could do it in the platform where customers around are looking for coaches and they can see how you help people. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, thanks awesome. for watching today. We will see you tomorrow, uh, tonight. Yeah, tonight we're gonna be live. 8.30 so. p.m. live, right here, same bad time, <laughs> different bad time, same <laughs> bad channel though, with Gabe and Yvette are on we gonna The do Love it from Show. Here? No, we'll probably be at home. home? Okay, so good. The Love Show tonight with Gabe, Yvette and Gabe. Love Show with Gabe and Yvette. Uh, it's their channel, but we are we're the guests. We're the guests, uh, but we're yeah. going to be bro simulcasting. Oh, okay. So we'll be on their channels, okay. we'll be on our channels. Nice. It's going to be a love fest. Yeah. <laughs> so see you all tonight at 8.30, and uh, that's it. Take care.